and welcome to this week's episode of The Good Ground Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Okay, um, firstly, thank you as always for your comments and your likes and uh, everything else on with regards to last week's episode of the show. Um, and, um, well, this week. Uh, this week, it, there's a sort of link, I guess, between this week's episode of the show and last week's episode of the show, and that is the term accelerated maturation. Yes, anyway, so what I have here in front of me is a, a, a brand new whiskey to, to the UK market and um, I'd like to say a big thank you to Robert from High Fern for the samples for today's episode of the show. Um, I, it's, it's a Swiss whiskey, um, so I'm imagining it's probably available in Europe. I don't know whether it's actually available in America as yet, but I would imagine that it probably will be in due course. Um, but it is brand new to the UK market, and um, I'm hoping this is the first YouTube tasting of, of, uh, of this particular uh, brand of whiskey. Um, well, I can't be 100% certain of that. I've not done my homework, and um, well... Just guessing at the end of the day anyway so um, I'm introducing um, the seven seals whiskey now like I said this is a Swiss whiskey now the company itself doesn't actually have a distillery at the moment although I believe they have plans to build one in Lucerne in Switzerland so the juice that's in the bottle uh, comes from another Swiss distillery I think it's going to take a genius to figure out where that one is, mm. or should we say who that distillery is. Um, but anyway, um, the company won't let on <laughs> where, where the source of their whiskey is. And yeah, I, I, to be honest with you, I'm not really that fussed. I mean, you, you look at Ireland, there's been no end of new Irish whiskies coming onto the market in the last couple of years. Uh, and companies are doing exactly the same thing. They, they, they're either in the process of building a distillery or they have built a distillery and they haven't got um, stock that's sufficiently matured and so they're buying in from the usual suspects like Cooley for example and you know, you know the, the, the quality of Cooley whiskey so you know and, and a lot of them are doing something a little bit different to it and obviously Seven Seals is no, uh, no different to that and you know as long as they're not just sort of buying it aging it for a little bit longer and then sticking it in a bottle then you're yeah, fine yeah, do something a little bit different with it um, and like like I always say the, the proof is in the pudding at the end of the day you know it's how good uh, how good is your release and you know the, the other things are really sort of you know frippery at the end of the day well obviously not having your own distillery is not frippery but you, you know what I'm getting at anyway so basically they buy in the juice um, from this uh, other distillery in Switzerland. I'm guessing probably originally it's matured in American oak um, and then things start to get a little bit interesting. Uh, what they then do is they then take the juice out of the American oak casks, fill it into octaves, uh, in this instant port and um, sherry octaves. They then take these octaves over to uh, CERN um, pop them inside the, the large Hadron Collider and then bombard these octave casks with um, subatomic particles, you know, neutrinos and quarks and probably Higgs bosons and stuff like that. And it kind of it fundamentally changes the molecular composition of the whiskey and somehow th this f accelerates the maturation period. I mean, I suppose you could almost argue it's sending it forward in time I, I guess um, but you know this is what happens but actually it doesn't because I've just made that completely up it's that's a complete fabrication the honest answer is I have no idea what they do um, the company are being very very secretive about this um, accelerated maturation um, program because apparently they're trying to get it um, certified and uh, all that kind of stuff and uh, trademarked and what have you um, and uh, so they're not actually letting on but I'm going to hazard a guess that it's probably got something to do with smaller casks and, and to be fair if you look at the company's website which 
has a lot of words but doesn't really seem to have a lot of information if you see what I mean um, they one of their little logo-y things is this kind of to, to describe their um, process is almost like a chemical equation um, so you never know I might actually be closer to the truth than I actually think but anyway so Let's look at the facts or, 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 as, as far as we know them. Okay, it's um, labelled as a single malt whisky, so therefore it must be a minimum of three years old. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's obviously had at least that length of time maturation, so it's not like that, that the um, Cleveland Underground bottling that, that gets aged for six months and a week or whatever, you know, this, is, this has actually had some, you know, relative time in the barrel. Um, and like I said, I'm looking at the colour and having tasted them already, I'm going to make an assumption that they must be using some form of small barrels. What they do to the small barrels, I have absolutely no idea, but, you know, I think when we eventually find out, it may well be incredibly weird and wacky, or it may not be. But anyway, like I said, at the end of the day, um, it's, it's, you know, what the juice is like. And, um, well, I think, uh, I think I've waffled enough and uh, um, told a, a, a big enough porky about, uh, about this whiskey. So uh, let's have a look at what lineup is, or what the lineup is. Okay, so now there are six bottlings in the series, and I've obviously only got five, as you can see. Uh, so we're going to kick off with um, the sherry wood finish. This is bottled at 46%. Um, so what you have is you have a 46% bottling and a cask proof or a cask strength bottling in each of them, but I've only got the 46% um, sherry uh, finished. Next one we'll be looking at is the uh, port wood finish, uh, also bottled at 46%. Then we're going to look at the port wood cask strength bottling. This is bottled at 58.7%. Then we're going to move on to the peated port wood finish. Uh, again, like I said, this is the 46% bottling. And finally, we have the cask proof bottling of the peated port wood. Oh, so a bit of a mouthful. Uh, and again, this is bottled at 58.7%. A bit strange that they're both at 58.7%. Maybe that's just coincidental. Maybe they have just tweaked uh, the, the alcohol down to that. I, I, again, I don't know. Um, you would have thought, well, they've not said cask strength. I mean, I mean, they're implying that it's as it comes out of the cask. But it, like I said, it's a, a tad unusual to find sort of you know two bottlings um, that are exactly the same. But you know, like I said, it, that could indeed be true. And um, well, anyway, let's uh, let's look at the first of the uh, the five bottlings. Okay, so cherry would finish. Let's see what notes gives us on this. Light, um, quite sweetly sherried, um, more in, I would say, the, the sort of dried apricot sultana end of the sherry spectrum as opposed to, say, the sort of darker raisinated um, end of the, the sherry spectrum. So um, it's possible that this might, might not be Oloroso, uh, it might be a, a, another style of sherry. I don't get sort of nutty manthanier notes. I don't get sort of palacatado sort of notes. Um, so possibly it is Oloroso or refill Oloroso possibly. It's a, now as the, the, I said with the, the Cleveland Underground bottling, yes you can accelerate the, the, the process of wood interaction and this has a lot of wood, a lot of sherry. Um, but there's no substituting time for the maturation of the actual spirit character. And you can smell that has some, I wouldn't quite, slightly raw um, Provencal herbal spirit. Um, now, before I knew where 
I mean, I don't know. Well, before I knew where the, the, the juice actually came from, I just thought, it's a Swiss whiskey. It reminds me of you know who. Um, maybe that's just a, a quirk, a, the, the, the Swiss style, should we say. But um, I think uh, in, now I know it's rather more obvious that it's a big, big marker to where it actually does come from. Um, that's a touch of roasted coffee. Like I said, it's nicely Provencal, clean, very clean, no sulphur. Um, I mean, it's not, you know, it's it, quality is good. Uh, it's just sort of, it's just sherry at the end of the day. It is very, very sherry orientated. And um, let's see what parts like. Again, fairly light in body. It's more robust spices on the finish. Again, it is quite heavily sherried. Um, and you really have to kind of search for the spirit character. And, and it's only because um, I would say I know what I'm looking for. I can pick up that slight Provencal herbal character. Um, if you weren't au fait with, with Swiss whiskies, you'd just assume that, that that herbalness was probably coming from the sherry cask. And um, I, I wouldn't say it's disconnected, but again, I think, yes, there's a lot of sherry character, but there's not a huge amount of maturity to the spirit. And it's kind of just under there. And it, I wouldn't say it's one-dimensional. It is just pretty much sherry um, and you know how I feel about those sort of things um, but like I said I, I, the quality you can't argue with the quality okay so let's move on to the portwood finish let's see what the nose gives us on this end shall we again pretty heavy on the port um, black currant cherry Earth, wood smoke, slightly sort of burnt, scrubby, heathery kind of note. I'm, I'm guessing it's probably not tawny uh, pork casks as has been finished in. I'm guessing it's, um, again, if if my assumption of smaller casks, either octaves or quarters, is correct, I would imagine that. Uh, they're either broken down from larger casks or they've been specially um, seasoned. I would imagine probably the, the latter. Um, so I'm guessing that the casks have probably been seasoned with um, um, probably ruby pour or, or, or something of that kind of ilk. Um, there's a little sweet sort of barley, just, but again there's a slight rawness to it, just beneath all of that wood. Um, and again, the quality is really good, there's no sulphur, um, but it is all about the port wood um, at the end of the day. Anyway, let's, let's see what parts up. Quite sweet. Syrupy, black fruit, chocolate, a little bit of tannin on, on the mid palate. I'm not even I'm not even really getting a sort of I mean or right, maybe on the finish there's a little bit of a sort of a spirit note. Um, and there's some pleasant spices and it's very soft uh, and it's very drinkable. But again, it just it really doesn't seem to sort of say to me, you know, it doesn't give me a sense of place. Um, and that is because it's all about the cask finish, um, which is fine. You know, if, you, if, you, if their whole raison d'etre, for want of a better word, is, you know, um, experimenting with wood, then fine. No problem with that at all. They have certainly achieved that and there will obviously be a lot of you guys will, will, will probably really love this stuff. For me, I would like to just have a little bit more idea of, you know, the, 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 where it came from. Okay, 
So let's move on to the cast proof bottling. So like I say, 58.7%. This is the, the bulk wood. Obviously a lot more intense than the 46% bottling. Very herbal. More um, port herbal than spirit herbal. Um, more spice. Uh, it's less of the syrupy kind of fruit notes. Um, it's a little rawer, uh, which is, I suppose, n not unexpected given its ABV. Um, and that sort of raw spirit is kind of just poking through. Um, it's not unbalanced. Um, and it's, it, again, very, very clean, very polished. Um, but again, like, this, like the 46% the, the portwood, um, it is all about the portwood. Let's see what the bow's like. Again, intenser um, than the 46% bottling. More herbal notes now. Certainly, I'm getting the, 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 the oak kind of stops on the mid palate, and I'm getting pretty much um, spirit right on the finish. Um, and 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 again, that just indicates to me that it is all very young. Um, it just hasn't sort of developed yet. Um, again, the, the port character is really intense, a little bit more syrupy than the nose would suggest. Um, but like I said, it kind of sort of stops on, on the middle. And you're just left with that sort of slightly spirity uh, character right on the finish. I'm going to put a little drop of water with it and uh, see what that does to it. Um, Right, let's see what those are like now. It's kind of almost like the 46% bottling. Um, it's softer, it's a little bit more... less raw, obviously. Um, probably a little bit more chocolatey, a little bit more spicy, possibly. Um, but again, still pretty much um, poor, really. I'm getting a little bit more of that sort of burnt scrub kind of character. Um, but uh, yeah, it is pretty much, pretty much like the forty-six percent bottling. So that's fine now. Again, less raw. Possibly feels a bit more integrated but it is still a touch on the short side and it is a, still a touch spirity on the finish um, but again you know I, I, you can't argue with the quality the quality is, is is there and it's all just a question of whether you like this particular style and although I like it I think it's pleasant I, 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 I find it a difficult thing to sell because I like I said look, I just want to know more about where it's come from i don't i'm not such a huge fan of, of, of just you know big oaked whiskies you know whether they're all poor sherry or american oak um you know it to me I, I want a little bit more light and shade i want a little bit more balance and um and, and i honestly believe that you cannot cheat time you know th these things just require patience and time and you know I, I honestly don't think you can honestly replicate that in a, in a you know, in, in any manner. So, but again, pleasant. Right. Okay. So let's move on to the peated portwood finish. Um, now this should be interesting. Again, herbal. Um, a combination of herbal port and herbal spirit. Um, not talking mega huge amounts of peat. I mean, there's a pleasant amount of peat. It's smoky. There's a little bit of manure. Um, again, black currant, a little bit of syrup, um, touch of tar. I mean, again, it's it's a pleasant nose, but I mean, 
there's no barley notes, there's no spirit, that, you know, it, it is, it's peat and portwood. I mean, you know, okay, um, that there have been a number of peated portwood bottlings by other distilleries that, that I've really, really liked. Um, and um, I suppose, you know, you can certainly sort of forgive them for sort of, you know, going down the weird and wacky route. I mean, you know, Springbank have done that with Long Row. Um, but no, more often than not, they have sort of a quirk. Um, and this is, I wouldn't say pretty, what's the best word? It's not simple, um, but it's pretty much straight down the line, if you see what I mean. It is, you know, a peated portwood. There's no weird butric notes. There's no sort of like, you know, huge tar or fish or anything like that. It's not a kind of like, oh my God, that's a car crash. Um, it's it's perfectly acceptable. Um, but again, I, and I think if, if, if I'd have had more distillery character in in the rest of the range, more balance, um, you would say, yeah, okay, I can live with a bit of weird old peated port, you know. Um, anyway, let's see what that's like. Quite soft, earthy, manure-y, smoky, slightly astringent, um, herbal, almost, again, slightly Provencal herbal, no on the mid palate. Again, a touch on the short side, the, the, although the, the wood is lingering a little bit more, um, but it is quite drying, even at 46%, and there's... I'm getting some encroaching tannins, a little dusty sort of tannin, which is kind of adding to that kind of dryness. Um, and again, it's just like all the rest of them. It is very much orientated to the, to the cask. Um, so there you have it. That's the 46% bar. Oh, right, okay, so let's move on to the last bottling of today. This is the... Um, Heated port wood cask proof, and and actually it's quite interesting because the, the colour is is a lot lighter than the uh, the forty six percent bottling. Um, but anyway, let's uh, see what those give us. It's actually more porty, more sweeter. Um, that's got a lovely peat character. It's almost medicinal, um, which is uh, really intriguing. Um, it's phenolic, it's intense. I, I, I love the intensity of this, but again, there's a rawness to it. Um, although, God, that's getting stinky. I mean, there's a sort of... Yeah, the, the, I mean, again, this is getting slightly weird, and, uh, you know, I kind of quite like it. You know, there's a... Oh, God, how am I going to put this? A slight plasticine sort of note, you know? It's not unpleasant it's just kind of the way the port and the peat seems to be sort of kind of working together is giving it that kind of almost kind of play-doughy not but not quite as so sweet as play-doh if you could imagine sort of play-doh mixed with manure you're probably getting I mean god I'm making this sound absolutely dreadful but you know it's actually it's in a weird and wonderful way it's really quite intriguing um there's some syrupy black fruit, there's, again, like I said, there's, if you sniff hard enough, you can probably get some Provencal herbal spirit character, but, you know, this is, again, just all about the wood. Let's see what the palette's like. Gritty. Smoky, tense, drying. Again, the alcohol is pretty well contained. I will give it that. The cast proof bottlings um, are not... I mean, yes, all right, they are a little bit short. Um, but I love the way the peat lingers on this one. It tastes 
like there's more peak character than the, uh, there is at 46%. I mean, that often tends to be the case when you have a cask strength peated whiskey. It's all more intense. You put a little drop of water with it and the peak kind of dissipates out a little bit. Um, it's got a lovely phenolic character. I mean, it's a lovely whiskey. It's, it, to me, it, it's so far it's my personal favorite yes all right there's no distillery character um, I, we've kind of got that bit you know but i love the intensity of it um let's put a little drop of water with it and see if it does indeed sort of mirror the 46 percent bottling more or less i mean it's 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 still pretty sweet um Again, the emphasis is now more on the port, on the sort of sweet black fruits and, and, and syrup. Um, and again, the peat is now sort of taking a bit of a back seat. It's a little bit more dustier, a little bit smokier, less phenolic, less intense. But, you know, it's still pleasant, you know. Um, and still slightly manure as well. Um, let's see what the power's like. Again, sweeter. There's a slight confected edge to that sort of sweetness. Um, still quite medicinal, although the peat is less phenolic in character. It's still a touch on the short side. Um, again, I'm, I, there's no spirit character uh, in, in, in essence. Um, and But it does linger. It's got a lovely peaty finish. And, you know... Um, I think that's my favourite of, of, of all of them, to be honest with you, and um, yeah, like that. Right, okay, so that's some of today's episode of The Sharp. Um, firstly, a big, big thank you again to Robert from Highburn and to uh, Seven Seals for the samples uh, for today's episode of The Show. Hopefully, you're not too, too disappointed with, with my review. Um, I mean, I don't feel it was unduly negative, um, but I'm guessing it's because it's not a gushingly positive review. They're probably thinking, well, who the hell is this guy? Um, I, but so, I mean, I could go through each of the individual bottlings, but uh, I think, you know, I'll be pretty much saying the same about everything. Um, yes, obviously, accelerated maturation works insofar as getting oak character into the spirit that is that's that's proven that's an obvious um thing from this this little lot and the cleveland underground bottling it is possible to basically extract a lot of oak character in a, sh a relatively short period of time what you can't do is get the maturation into your spirit that you cannot do in a short period of time that has to take its own lovely course uh you the oxidation the interaction with the air and that kind of thing is, is something you cannot replicate on on a small scale in a short period of time as far, as, far as i can see um now you you may well like the, the style of this you may well like a lot of sherry a lot of pork character that kind of thing and 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 i always encourage um you guys to to at least give them a try try them out see what you think uh, and make your own minds up. I mean, you know, my opinion at the end of the day is my own opinion. And although a number of you obviously have similar uh, views, uh, shall we say, you know, everybody's different. And, you know, uh, like, like I said, uh, give them a try. And um, although I, I, it, it's not a product that I would get behind because of the obvious things that I've said, um they they're not bad um i don't quite know what they're retailing for i haven't i did should have looked into that but i'm guessing they're in and around well the the, the 46 percent bottlings are probably going to be what 50 60 quid i guess which is a reasonable amount of money it has to be said uh, i imagine that the cask strength bottlings are probably around about 60 70 quid and they are 50 cl as opposed to 70 cl um but like i said give them a try you you, you may well like them um and they may well be your thing so but anyway um that's this week's episode of the show in the bag um 
only thing to say is don't forget only a couple more weeks now until uh, the Nottingham Whiskey Festival. So if you haven't bought your tickets, get in touch. Um, get your tickets because hopefully it's going to be it's going to be a fun day. Um, and I, I don't think Robert. I mean, I know Robert will be there. I don't think he's going to be showing any of the Seven Seals, but certainly he'll be showing some other stuff from his portfolio, uh, which which is really good. Yeah. So you know, um, come along and, um, and and have a great time. So. Until then, hopefully, see you there.